Apophis, Deadly Asteroid Headed Toward Earth, by Humongous. It's big. Rose Bowl-sized big. It's bad. 510 megatons of TNT bad. What would that type of firepower equate to? Well, the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated was the Tsar Bomba, a Soviet hydrogen bomb yielding roughly 50 megatons of destructive force. Simultaneously discharge 10 of those babies, and you'd have a pretty good idea. Fat Man, the nuclear device dropped on Nagasaki, Japan in 1945, was equivalent to 21 kilotons, nowhere near a single megaton of dynamite. Keep in mind, 1,000 kilotons equal a megaton. Most estimates assert roughly 39,000 folks perished immediately from this blast. Now consider a force thousands of times greater. I'm no mathematician, but it sounds like something of that magnitude could result in tens of millions of human deaths. So what precisely am I referring to? Known as 99942 Apophis, it's a near-Earth asteroid racing toward the celestial body we call home. In this particular case, the term near-Earth does not denote an object as of yet adjacent this planet. Instead, in the year 2029, Apophis is calculated to pass closer to us than communications satellites in geosynchronous orbit. The troubling news comes from what's known as the quote-unquote keyhole, a theoretical window through which this asteroid may pass as it glides by Earth. Should Apophis thread this region, which is roughly 2,000 feet wide, it will return once again in the year 2036, striking the planet with 510 megatons of awesome force. Astronomers have calculated that if Apophis impacts Earth, it'll do so in the Pacific Ocean, somewhere between Hawaii and San Francisco. Where this chunk of space debris traverses the keyhole becomes an important factor. A little to either side of this hypothetical portal, and the asteroid could hit further inland or further out to sea. The problem stems from the fact that there isn't only one keyhole. In truth, there are thousands. This means even if Apophis fails to pass through the 2,000-foot-wide ingress, it's going to thread some keyhole. As a result, the asteroid will return at a date beyond 2036 to hit the planet. So, what's going to happen when it does, you tensely inquire? Picture a tsunami so immense it obliterates not only the entire west coast of North America, but Hawaii, Japan, and all the nations of the Pacific Rim. A tidal wave that makes the Indonesian tsunami of 2004 seem like a lap pool. How come we haven't heard about this, you query? Actually, you have. Chances are, like most people, you've engaged in other, more pressing activities, i.e. perusing Facebook, obsessing over the next American Idol, or determining whether or not Kirstie Alley is fat this week. Apophis has been in the news. You've had more than enough opportunity to read about it. You just haven't. Yes, you may find this chapter depressing, but it need not be. Humans maintain the level of intellect that could render Apophis a pleasant sighting in the nighttime sky as opposed to a catastrophic asteroid. Even though every technologically advanced country on this planet is aware of Apophis, not much is being done to mitigate the problem it poses. You'd think something of this nature would be top priority. Unfortunately, it seems most governments have their hands full starting wars. We have numerous space programs, and although we've allegedly been to the moon, we haven't returned in over 40 fucking years. It's the same scenario. We can do something, but instead, we don't. On the bright side, scientists have proposed methods for averting Apophis. Such scenarios include a gravity tractor, a spacecraft launched to divert the asteroid's path without touching the celestial body. The gravitational field of this discharged probe once adjacent to Apophis would, in theory, drag the space debris from a collision course with Earth. A second method of mitigation is known as kinetic impact, actually striking the asteroid with an object. A sizable spacecraft traveling at high enough velocity may knock Apophis off its current course. 
Don Quixote, a mission undertaken by the European Space Agency, is the first kinetic impact deflection strategy with the potential of being tested. Unfortunately, Donnie Boy is still in its blueprint stage. Thus, there's no way of knowing whether or not DQ could prevent an asteroid from colliding with Earth. Focused solar energy is another option. Such a technique merely involves construction of a massive space station comprised of enormous lenses and a gargantuan magnifying glass directed toward the sun. Why don't we just build a second moon and place it in orbit while we're at it? In theory, these reflective devices would capture solar energy and aim it toward the asteroid. Over an extended period of time, this conductivity may alter Apophis's path. A fourth alternative involves attaching a, quote, plasma engine powered by a nuclear reactor, unquote, to the hunk of space junk, firing it and thereby pushing the celestial body off course. The problem here is that Apophis is pretty big and traveling at an ample rate of speed. It would require profuse firepower over an extended period of time to create a change in the space rock's trajectory. As long as the reactor continued working, though, it may be a good option. Unfortunately, Apophis, like all asteroids, is spinning. As a result, scientists would have to devise some sort of method for firing the plasma engine at continually changing intervals, so the celestial body doesn't veer back into harm's way. Couldn't we just blow the hell out of Apophis? We've got nukes coming out the ass! Why not send a couple skyward and annihilate this hunk of cosmic clutter? Great idea! This is probably the worst defensive strategy we could engage in. Nuking an asteroid may reduce it to fragments, but then you're left with thousands of smaller asteroids headed toward Earth. Plus, resultant of the partial test ban treaty, it's been quote-unquote illegal to detonate atomic weapons in space since 1963. Additionally, Apophis's composition may absorb nuclear devices launched its way. It's been proven numerous asteroids are as dense as styrofoam. Should Apophis be one of these objects, it would simply suck up as many missiles as we could pump into it. Currently, these proposals are nothing more than theories. We don't know if any would work. Ideally, scientists would love to have a 100-year advance notice regarding potential impactors. Since these mitigation plans concern altering an asteroid's path over an extended period of time, the longer one has to do so, the better. If a celestial body was 100 years from Earth, we'd need to deflect it far less than an object a year from impact. Most astronomers assert detection of space debris 10 years prior to collision is sufficient time to avert disaster. Well, 2029 isn't that far off, and we don't have a defensive strategy anywhere near in place. If you're wondering about the odds of you being killed by an asteroid, they're approximately the same as dying in a plane crash, one in nearly 700,000. Roughly a couple dozen folks have been wasted by stellar scraps over the last 400 years. This number is deceiving, as Earth tends to be hit by something sizable on an average of every two centuries. In 1908, 300 square miles of Tunguska, Siberia were obliterated by either an asteroid or comet that exploded above the middle of nowhere. Had this object discharged over New York City, we would have witnessed millions of deaths. After all, this event yielded a blast somewhere between 5 and 30 megatons. Let's not be the dumbasses of this universe. We possess advanced intellect. Dinosaurs had brains the size of pebbles, and they were wiped out by a cosmic impact. Should we suffer the same fate in the midst of our heightened intelligence? We'd only have ourselves to blame. <laughs>